Yeah, hey everyone, Brian with you from the Game Common, and today we are starting another brand new AI-only championship series. I know some of you guys have been waiting for quite some time with this, and I'm excited to be doing it. It's going to be our first one in Gathering Storm. So, if you're kind of new to the channel and you don't know what an AI-only series is, is essentially it is a competition themed after like the World Cup or March Madness, where we put the AI up, all the different AI leaders up against each other to see who's going to come out on top and we do it in various different stages uh, to start with we're gonna have all of these sieves all 45 leaders basically I know there's 46 because Elnor counts twice but we're only gonna use her once uh, essentially what's gonna happen is they're all gonna compete against each other in group stages then the leaders of the each group stage are gonna advance to a knockout round then from the knockout round we're gonna uh, trim it down till we get to like the final four then the final four are gonna use that new uh, map the mirror map I think it was what it was called and we're gonna end up using that uh, for then the finals and whoever ends up winning the finals we might do a best of the three for the finals and whoever ends up winning uh then is going to take home uh, all the glory essentially so um let's go ahead and launch into this uh because of the mod i'm using we have to actually do this on multiplayer we actually have a new mod this time um i already have a configuration going here um i have a new mod uh and it seems to be working pretty well so i kind of like it so it's called spectator mod um by abstr and it seems to work really really well um we are going to use some city States. In the past, I think our last championship series, we didn't do city states because essentially they're just easy targets for the AI and they generally conquer them really quickly. And so if you as a Civ spawn next to a bunch of city states, that Civ is generally going to be a little more powerful. This time I decided to add it back in because I mean, there's generally some Civs that really need city states to be good. So for that reason, we will go ahead and keep city states in the game. Um, I tried getting a little more than one per sieve was kind of my goal there. And so well, let's go ahead and put our first group down. So our groups this time are going to be, um, well, hold up. Let's get two more here real quick. And then we're going to swap this and we got to put ourselves here. Um, but like I said, our groups are going to be based on uh, alphabetical order this time. Instead of trying to be uh, cute and doing everything like and ranking everyone, it just seemed easier for us to just uh, set this all up and have it uh, going based on uh, just alphabetical order. Um, the other thing is most of the time uh, I will do this off camera. This first time I'm going to do it on camera just so you guys kind of have an idea of how we're actually setting the game up. So in case you want to do something similar, you can do it yourself. Um, and then yeah, so let's just throw out the leader. So we got Alexander, uh, we got Nubia, we got France, which is partly why we're going to be using England, uh, Eleanor. Just FYI. We got Cleopatra, Kamenetia, we got Cyrus, we got Dido, we have Eleanor, and then last but not least, we have Frederick. So this is going to be our first group of nine that will compete against each other. Um, I'm going to leave you there, and then can we give him a different color? Yeah, we could do yellow on Alexander. Yeah, let's roll with that. So how this is going to work with this particular mod is we're not going to actually exist in the game at all. Um, we basically will have vision on all of the AI, but we won't be able to interact or, or, or do anything with the AI other than voting for World Congresses, which I think we have to do. So in that case, we're trying to basically put as little of a footprint on the game as possible because we want the AI and the strengths of each AI to determine who's going to be the winners in each. And so because of that, um, I'm going to try voting for whatever I think is going to be the most popular uh, decision and we're just going to leave our hands off as much as possible um, now there are some civs that are naturally really really strong when it comes to these AI only championship series uh, Russia comes to mind as one of the better civs Teddy uh, usually is really aggressive same thing with Mongolia it, it tends to be really like the AI that tends to be super aggressive tends to be one of the better uh, civs in the game I don't remember who won our last AI only series but um, the one before that our first one I know Brazil won and so I'm kind of intrigued to see who's going to end up winning this one. Um, so let's take a quick look at the map. We have Egypt over here on the far west, and then directly to the northeast, we have uh, England. Um, then we have two city-states here who are probably going to end up dying. And in fact, Egypt might be in a bit of a precarious situation to begin with because they don't have a lot of room to expand over here. So they might uh, end up with an early war against London or England. We shall see. Uh, then we have uh, Dido down there. We have India to their southeast. Uh, we have directly east of that is Nubia. And then to the far east is uh, Alexander. Uh, Alexander then uh, up north we got France and then we have um, uh, 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 Persia over there with then Germany smack dab in the middle so 
Based on this, who do we see having a really good opportunity? I mean, right away, France jumps out to me as having maybe potentially the most space until we uh, let them or until they reveal some more space. We're not going to 100% know, but I definitely think France has a really good chance here. Um, other thing I should note, we have two things turned on right now. We have auto in turn enabled so that once I hit next turn, it should just continue on and on and on and on and on and on. Uh, every once in a while, we get pop-ups that stop it. I'm not quite sure which ones do. Um, but then I also turned on the yield icons always show here so we can actually see what's going on up there as well. And as you see, everyone starts off exactly the same except us because we're not an AI, but we don't exist in the game. So that's a good thing. So let's go ahead and advance time and um, let's just see what happens. So Macedonia stumbled on a natural wonder. Okay, so apparently finding natural wonders spawn, uh, stopped the game as well. So there is a natural wonder. Oh, right here. I got gotcha. you. Ooh, that's a decent spot then. You can go settle there on the coast. Bunch more natural wonders are being discovered as well. If you've never seen the AI play in Deity, they always spawn out with three settlers. Well, they spawn out with uh, one settler, but when they throw it on their first city, they get a second settler, and when they throw it on their second city, they get a third settler. Um, so they're going to have three cities here pretty early on. Um, depending on who ends up at war with each other, uh, grabbing four early cities could just really help start snowball. Oh, the one thing that I was going to say that we're going to do end up doing is, so essentially how we're going to determine who wins every single uh, round is going to be, uh, it's going to come down to a couple things number one we're gonna wait for one of the ais to actually win one of the victory types whether that's uh science whether that's culture whether that's uh domination religion or diplomacy um 99.97 time uh, percent of the time it's usually they end up winning a science victory um but we'll see so like whoever goes out in a science victory the turn they go out we're basically gonna stop the game and then whoever uh, is in the top uh, 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 three spots, those three guys are going to uh, 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 advance on. Unless whoever ends up winning the science victory is not in the top three, then it's just going to be the top two, and whoever won the science victory will be the number one seed. So FYI, if Germany ends up winning... Uh, in a science victory, then we'll look at this and you can see Cleopatra and Alexander are in first and second place. So the three civs that would be moving on right now would be Cleopatra, Alexander, and uh, uh, Germany. Now, if no one ends up winning a science victory and we get to turn 500, which shouldn't happen, then at that point, we will grab the top three scores. Uh, if there's a tie, we're just going to basically base it on whoever's in the third spot. I don't think it's possible really to tie score though. Um, but let's see what's going on. Anything major happening? Um, yeah, actually, Bristol... <laughs> Egypt ended up falling, or sorry, sorry, Egypt ended up conquering one of uh, Eleanor's cities, so Egypt's already on the um, offensive here, and things are actually going really, really well for them. What is the combat here? So you're at 134, Egypt's at 63, so uh, right now England has a lot of their troops out of position, but if they could start moving westward, they might be able to take back what's going on. Uh, looks like we might have some early aggression here between Persia and Germany as well. India looks like they're moving for Kumasi. Um, we shall see if that's what they decide to do. Zanzibar looks like they're about to get attacked by Nubia. Alexander's got a lot of room down here. And man, dude, uh, France got a lot of room over here as well. Oh, Antioch's fallen to Persia. Persia might have a good chance in this one too. Yeah, I think Persia might have a really good chance here. The other thing is if Egypt can actually knock out England here or at least start outpacing England, uh, Egypt's going to be in a very good spot because they basically can settle all the way over to there. I mean, they're going to have a ton of room all to themselves. So this is pretty interesting early on already. So kind of excited to see who can come out of this. Now, as I mentioned before, there's some civs that always end up seeming to win. And so I generally have a bias towards like the underdogs. Uh, so, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing Egypt actually doing pretty good because I don't know Egypt's ever made the knockout stage. I'd have to say I don't think Egypt has ever made the knockout stage. So this might be pretty interesting. We've also never done, um, well, we did AI only series once with only the uh, new gathering storm civs, but we've not done a championship series with them. So I'm intrigued to see how they're going to shake up the balance in the game. It looks like both Germany and uh, India are actually going for Kumasi. Um, the other thing to note is Dido is right next to India, and India tends to be one of the more aggressive civs, especially with elephants. So if Kumasi falls to them, they might end up taking their attention over here to Dido, and Dido might find herself in a bad situation. Now, are you guys at peace? Did you guys end up piecing each other? They did end up piecing each other, which is really, really, really bad for England. So she's already going to be behind the eight ball. Oh... But, uh, sorry, Egypt's actually currently being sieged down by barbarians, so that's going to be fun to see. 
Um, I don't know if they're fighting. Did they end up fighting? No, they actually kind of like each other. So, um, he has a lot of troops on his border, though. So, we might see a war here pretty quickly. Uh, Kumasi ended up getting taken over by Germany. All right. So, Germany is looking pretty good now. Their downside here is, and this is generally what happens in AI-only series, usually one Civ ends up at war with another Civ, then one of the two Civs gets absolutely wrecked, like their military combat strength gets knocked way, 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 way low, and then they end up getting declared on by another neighbor, and then it's like GG from that point. So, for example, Germany right now might end up losing Hamburg, essentially because they ended up moving all their troops down here out of position. In addition, if some of their troops, or if they lose too many troops through here, then that kind of opens them up to be invaded by India. So um, this could be a precarious situation for Germany. We'll want to keep an eye on it. Uh, right now, Nubia is at four cities. Alexander is at only three. He's a little behind the eight ball. Four cities over here for France. One, two, three, four, five cities for Persia. And they might have six here before too long. Dido's at four. India is at four. Germany is at uh, four, but it's about to be three. England's at three. And Egypt is at four. And they seem to have pushed back on the barbarians. Okay, let us keep an eye out on uh, Hamburg. And yeah, it's going to fall. It's definitely going to fall now. So Persia has another city. Um, Germany looks like they're going to try taking it back. They do have a lot of damage, potentially, or a lot of abilities to kill some of these dudes here. Um, the spearmen, though, are going to come very, very clutch here. So we'll see uh, how Germany responds. They're also being invaded by barbarians right now. Wow, Germany is just getting completely shafted. <laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck with that. The Jebel Plateau? Huh. I didn't know that actually existed. I thought that was just a wonder name. I didn't realize that there was actually a plateau named after it. Nubia is actually looking pretty good here because they have a lot of room. And they might actually end up uh, jumping in on uh, Kumasai and taking it over. In addition, they got a couple city-states here as well that they might end up focusing on. So it looks like they peace. Now, now you just moved your troops backwards for some reason. And Germany kind of just ended up giving them Hamburg. Loyalty is going to be an issue, but probably not too much until this next era, depending on who got a golden era. Uh, five cities now for Egypt. They probably will kill Valletta unless they suzerain it first. Um, e England is taking on Babylon, which is very unfortunate. One of the best city-states. Actually, the best city-state in the game, in my opinion. Right? Babylon? 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 Babylon, they're the ones, the science one? No, they're not the one I wanted. No, 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 I'm thinking Geneva. Yeah, never mind. Uh, never mind. Yeah, you can take over Babylon. Although, then again, for her, yeah, because she's going to get a lot of great works. Babylon been really, really good for her. Oh, well. Oh, well. Alexander is quite strong right now. Uh, 360. Yeah, he's quite strong right now. What's uh, Nubia at? She's pretty strong, too. Actually, she's a little stronger because she's got her unique unit out. So this is interesting. Uh, she ended up taking on Mo and Joe, though. Hmm. Alexander might be in this weird spot where he's just surrounded by strong neighbors. And so because of it, he just never ends up declaring war and is never able to take any cities. And he's just never able to ball out of control. So immediately, it looks like if I had a guess right now, I'd say Egypt, Dido, and uh, Persia are one, two, and three. Let's actually compare. Egypt, Dido, and... I said Persia. Persia is actually further. Wow, they're a lot lower than I thought, huh? Because they have a lot of territory right now. Um, the other thing to keep in mind when it comes to score victory, there are two things that really help a sieve go over the top, and that's wonders, and uh, that is religion. So whoever ends up with the religion usually gets about a hundred extra points in score. So. I'm not going to say always, but most of the time, the sieves that are up in the top three tend to be the sieves that end up with a religion. The only person with a religion as of now is Egypt, so that's partly why she's so high. Um, wonders uh, are 15 per wonder. So, and I think, what is it uh, on religion? I think it's 10 per city. So as long as you have 10 cities flipped to your religion, then you get um, a bunch of extra points there. Um, but anyways, 15 per wonder. So we can see Egypt built a wonder and Nubia ended up building a wonder. And, that, and then also Alexander. And that's why those guys are um, where they're at right now. Uh, on this because um, for the most part the differences between the technology the great people and the uh, and the uh, civics are all going to be pretty close uh, especially when the AI is playing on the same difficulty level they're all going to be pretty close together so that's why the wonders and the religion really take them over the top um, I did want to see what wonders got knocked out so we got the great bath can I search just for wonder would that just show up 
my hand just screwed up. Okay, so yeah, we got the great, uh, the Hanging Gardens, rather, in Egypt, and they are currently building Stonehenge as well, but they have a religion already. Huh, interesting. That would actually screw over someone else, but uh, England's also currently working on it. So we'll see who ends up knocking it out first. Um, that's a natural wonder. Uh, the Great Bath got... Oh, no, the Apadanda is getting built by um, by India. Uh, the Great... No, that's the Apadanda. Apadanda. My gosh, as well, Nubia. Um, they both look almost identical. No, no, no. Nubia's going to knock it out first. Nubia's barely going to get it first. The Great Bath did get built in Alexander. That's the wonder he ended up having. Who was the other one? Persia had one too, didn't they? Who else had one? Nubia? Oh, Nubia had another one. Okay. Ah, the Oracle. Okay. 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 So we got a normal age. It doesn't matter. Um, let's just go ahead and advance the next turn. By the way, we usually keep these videos around 20, 25 minutes. So just FYI, if you're new to my channel, it's just... Um, it's usually good just to keep my mouth refreshed because these tend to be a lot of talking. I'm also on meds right now that are making my mouth super dry and it's really annoying. So just FYI on that. So the war between Germany and Persia is still going on. The combat strength is just slightly in favor of Germany. I don't know if they're going to be able to push back, and I highly doubt they're going to be able to take Hamburg. Um, they just don't have enough troops, I think, right now to really, um, well, at least enough of a troop advantage to actually finish it. All right, so Nubia ended up getting the Apadana, so that is another 15 points for them. Uh, India is currently now at war as well with Dido. Uh, actually, India ended up taking over Dido's town, the LPQY, because that's, yeah, that's Dido. So we kind of saw this happening with the Varu, because the Varu are just so godly early game. And... Man, yeah, that's going to be bad news for Dido. I don't know if she's going to be able to survive that. Stonehenge is still currently being built. Yep, still being built. It looks like uh, England stopped it, though. But England is really close to taking Bristol back. Are they going to get it? They are going to get it. Barely, with no HP left, they're able to take it. Unfortunately for them, I think Bristol is going to flip immediately right back because uh, uh, Egypt's bringing out the chariot archers. So we got a very entertaining first couple turns already. Usually we don't get this many wars, I think, early game. So, and it's not like we have a bunch of uh, super, um, super over uh, aggressive civs either. I mean, Alexander's usually pretty aggressive, and he's the one civ that's like hasn't been at war yet. I mean, he's not the one civ, but um, he's definitely not even looking like he's gonna declare war. All right, so Nubia is now going for Kumasi. It looks like Germany is just getting ganged up on, so this is gonna be very, very bad for them, especially if Dido decides to start moving eastward as well. Um, LPQY ended up flipping. Um, it does have Swordsman. Not quite sure if it's going to end up flipping back to Dido. So that's going to be very unfortunate for uh, Chandra Gupta if he ends up losing it. Because uh, that's, you know, anytime you take over a town, you get a larger Empire score. And so um, the more tiles, the better that you have. Um... But we'll end up seeing how it ends up flipping, how it ends up working out. Kamasi ended up getting released, so interesting. Nubia didn't take it over, which she probably wouldn't have been able, wouldn't been able to hold it anyways, so maybe that was for the best. France has got ridiculous amounts of room. Um, France is probably going to end up here pretty close to the top three, I would think. Even if she's not able to, even if she doesn't declare war on anyone, because she's still got ridiculous amounts of room. Bandar... Has no suzerain yet, because uh, uh, that is a potential take for France, but we shall see. Uh, looks like England is going to hold on to Bristol, but it's flipping now. Loyalty issues, and uh, you're starting to pop out a bunch of catapults. All right, have fun with that. Have fun with that. Um, LPQY is still neutral. The Varu are starting to get really low on HP. Alexander just doesn't seem interested in killing anyone yet for whatever reason. And France looks like they're probably friendly with most people. Yeah. Yeah, is the Persian-German war still going on? It is. It is. And right now, it's still very much in the favor of, 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 of Persia. Did that immortal just use its ranged attack? Holy crap, guys. I think an immortal actually used a ranged attack from the AI. They never do that. They actually are using the ranged attack? <laughs> Mind blown. I don't think I've ever seen the AI do that. All right. Well, they still attacked that time in um, melee versus range, which, you know, hurt them. But whatever. At least they're using the ranged attack. Go you. Go you. Go you. Bristol's now full loyalty because uh, Amani got placed there. Um, so the question is, Egypt's probably not in first anymore. Yeah, they dropped all the way to fourth. I was going to... I'm actually intrigued to see how close Elnor is. Now, keep in mind, 
Uh, religion, no religion. Wonder, no wonder. Yeah, I don't see any wonders. So that's definitely part of what's making the difference. In addition, she probably has a higher era score because she got her unique unit and her unique building. So I would assume she got lots of points from that. So she's at 42 era score compared to 25. Yeah, yeah. And she's probably in a golden age. Yes, and not. So who got the golden age? Um, Nubia with their unique unit. Egypt with their unique unit. Dido probably also built their unique unit. Eh, maybe. Maybe not. She ended up taking back LQPY. LPQY. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, she ended up taking that back. I don't see her unique unit. So, okay. Keep advancing. Now, remember, she's got 100% loyalty for everything on her home continent. So, everything up here on the coast would be 100% her loyalty. So that could really, really help, we shall see. Germany is getting really crunched in here, especially now losing Kamasi. Um, there's still a little bit of room eastwards to settle, a little room south and a little room west, but uh, yeah, definitely running out of space right now. Germany's in last, I would assume. Germany's in last. Oh, uh, no, Elnor's actually in last. And Chandra Group is actually even lower. Hmm, okay, okay. Alexander's still just biding his time. I would imagine if Alexander's able to start popping out some unique units here and declares war about the same time, he is just going to be able to walk all over Nubia. But we shall see. We got our first flood. Well, at least one of the first floods. First one we saw or at least paid attention to. Actually, there's another flood happening at the same very time. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, Egypt is still sitting here with the four cities. It's kind of hilarious how neither, neither of these guys are actually flipping right now. Are they still at war? Uh, yes, they are still at war with each other. Is Dido still at war? Yes, she's still at war. India looks pretty weak right now. They got a couple Varu, which is going to keep them alive. But here is ultimately the issue. He only has a 242 uh, um, uh, military strength. Nubia is sitting here at 453. There's a really good chance that Nubia might declare war here and start taking out some of these cities. There's a very strong chance that we see that happen. Actually, nope. Alexander saved his life. Alexander saved his life because Alexander declared war on Nubia. All right. So we now have the Alexander-Nubia war, which we thought was going to happen. And France is just sitting up here just laughing to herself while everyone else is killing themselves. While she has all the room in the world. She's also at war against Nubia. Not quite sure why we have a double war, but it is what it is. Um, and Classical Era is going to end in six turns, and we're going to wrap the episode up there. So um, this is going to be a longer series, like I said before. I think I said it before, but um, this is generally going to be a 30 to 45 uh, uh, episode series between all of the different parts. So um, thank you guys already for the support on this series. I know lots of you guys absolutely love it. I love seeing who comes out as the winner. I'm going to have to go back and actually pay attention again to some of the, uh, of the Earth second series and see who ended up winning that because i kind of forgot i'm um, gonna have to go look at that between episodes but yeah um thank you guys for the support uh, uh drop your likes drop your comments let me know who you guys are cheering for um anything else you want to see in the series any rule tweaks that you potentially want to see definitely drop them in the comments and uh you know i'll read them i'm not 100 percent i think I, I think we finally kind of figured out what we like but you know we'll definitely consider any uh changes that i think make sense so egypt is now rolling around with a bunch of crossbows that's going to be pretty good for holding her stuff. Not so good for taking over Bristol, though. Yeah, not so good for taking over Bristol. It would be intriguing. Can we trade? I don't think so. It would be interesting if we could make deals and see how much iron everyone has. Well, you know what we could do? We could pop up over here and go resources and yields. And we can't see anyone's. There we go. There we go. So right now, Persia has Niter. Iron, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All nine sieves have uh, iron. Uh, only five, though, have horses. And right now, Persia is the only one with Niter. But that just might be because uh, he's the only one that currently has that tech. If we look at the civics right now, uh, Nubia, Cyrus, and Alexander are all in first place in the tech. Um, they're all around the same area. And for whatever reason, no one is researching science? No, we just can't see what any one science is. Huh, that's weird. Usually you can see what their science is. Um, but France is definitely rolling away right now with science per turn. That's crazy. That's crazy. Score-wise, we got Nubia in first place. We got France in second place. We got Alexander in third. The religions, uh, we got Confucianism in Egypt. Uh, Zoroastrum. 
uh, in Nubia, uh, Buddhism in uh, Alexandria, uh, Dido ended up getting Judaism, and Catholicism is Germany. So all of those guys are going to get extra points because of that. Um, so wait, I didn't say France in any of those, did I? Egypt, Nubia, uh, Macedon, Dido, Germany. No, so France doesn't have a religion. So that's probably part of the difference here, too. Uh, religion, 31 points. So if you remove 31 from 348, she's at 317. Uh, so not too far behind. And she also has that one extra wonder, which, you know, is going to put her at like 302. So, I mean, you can start seeing how just a little bit of differences here and there can start making a pretty huge difference in the score. So right now, if the game were to end, it would be Nubia, France, and Alexander. We'll have to see after the next couple episodes who ends up winning. Um, so until then, I'll see you guys later. Hope you have a great day. Bye, everyone.